My name is Rhapsody, and welcome back to Slay the Spire Modded with Mod the Spire Launcher, Base Mod, Always Whale, Fetch Mod, Colored Map, The Construct, Replay the Spire, and SCS Black Ruse, which includes the new character known as The Serpent. <clears throat> Excuse me. We had our first successful run with The Serpent in the last episode. And lose all gold to remove two cards. Hell yeah, that's going to make whatever strategy we settle upon much more consistent. There's actually a three elite path here, so I'm going to have to take like an early value pick, but if we can get that done, ooh, baby, we're going to have some value going. Perfect. So what I really, like, one of the most obvious and front-facing archetypes that I haven't really delved that deep into is the knife-based archetype. <clears throat> And I want to get into that. Snipe is a value card for taking out elites. Especially because all of the elites on this floor have predictable behavior. So it's going to be really easy to tell what they're going to do. Single strike there. You attack last turn and then debuff this turn, so you're probably going to be attacking next turn. That's not guaranteed, but I had nothing else to do that turn anyway. Oh, look, they're attacking. So we get our damage in and kill them. <clears throat> okay. Fast forward, unruled, and shifting thoughts. I don't think I take any of these. Not for this deck, at least. Gain some gold. Nice. Upgrade Snike. Hell yes. That upgraded from 16 to 24 damage. That's eight more damage. <laughs> All right. All of the cards here. Not great. Reality is uh, innate. All cards lose ethereal property for this combat. So you obviously don't want two of those. Even if you do want it, you don't want two. I'm going to card remove another strike out of that. Keep it super thin. So I know for a fact that this enemy is going to be attacking next turn because they attack on all turns except for the first turn. I'm also actually going to use a Swift Potion here to get me further through my deck as well as apply a Weaken. <clears throat> Snipe, I guess you're attacking next turn. <laughs> and then... Oh, we don't have any knives. No. Okay, I'll gain shielding and defend. We'll take one damage here, but... Damn, Snipe took all my knives. Potion Belt. Upon pickup, gain two potion slots, as well as Advance, Alleviate, and Faint. So Advance, as it currently stands, doesn't have a card deficit, right? It's zero cost. It is a card itself, so you have to draw it initially. You draw one fuel card the turn after you play it, so that's two card deficit. But it draws two cards. And then the upgrade is it draws three. So it has a net like it has a net positive effect at that point. However, the positive effect is is front loaded and then the negative effect is delayed. I wonder if it's just like an always pick. <clears throat> it could be. It could be in a deck that doesn't have consistent enough draws, but we have consistent enough draws that I don't think we need it. There's also faint deal damage equal to two times the number of cards in your hand. Discard your hand. Really good in the discard synergy as well as the alleviate, but we don't have discard synergy and we're really not hoping to get discard synergy. Every single time you remove a card from your deck, you make further removals more powerful. Consider if you have 100 cards and you remove one, you're removing 1% 1 of your deck. But if you have eight cards and you're removing one, you're removing 12.5% of your deck. If you have six cards and you're removing one, you are guaranteeing your opening draw is always those five cards, and every single following draw will be as well. Alright. So that sentry in the back line is definitely going to be attacking next turn. Because these always alternate, that's how the sentries on the first floor work. There was a, a comment recently that was talking about vision as a mechanic. 
and someone was saying that they believe it's RNG. Like, it's just a lot of RNG. It's really not. So, so many actions that enemies take in this game are prescribed. Hopefully I get an attack this turn, and we do. Just the one, though. This kidney shot, we have no knives, so we wouldn't actually be able to use it to kill the sentry. Which also, we can't use snipe at this point, which is a problem. Oh, never mind. We can now use snipe. <laughs> the problem is when you have a thin deck, enemies that trash your deck by, oh, I don't know, filling it with dazed are way more powerful against you. Like, Snipe here isn't going to do anything, because we have no knives. We wanted the weaken effect there, though, like a lot. All right. Letter open today. Every time you play three skills in a single turn, deal five damage to all enemies. Comet, shifting reality, double edge. I'll take none of this. I don't think they're necessary for us. Ooh, garlic. Enemy lose three strength at the start of combat. They gain one strength over the next three turns. That's really handy. This enemy attacks all turns, but first turn, so... Super simple stuff. There we go. And now we just get to wait until they die. Beautiful. Essence of Steel, gain four plated armor, as well as... Shifting Gears, I think. Now, since it's free, I'll definitely take it. Also, it has a benefit, right? It... It will trigger letter opener. There's no reason not to take it. See, I don't want to rest because I don't want to be on high HP when I go into that final fight. It's pretty important, in fact, that I'm not on high HP when I go into that final fight. Upgrade a card. Oh, hell yeah. Let's upgrade house cleaning so that we can always get more knives. This is good. That was bad. That was bad on my part. Alright, I'm just gonna garbage up my first turn. That that was that was dumb. That, that was dumb. Let's do better next time. Alright. I wanted to house cleaning my shifting gears to gain a dex is what really would have been good there. Alright. So the enemy's not gonna be attacking next turn, naturally. I've managed to pick up a bunch of extra knives to start the fight off with. Mm -hmm. You definitely will be attacking next turn. Having you weakened is pretty important. Mm -hmm. I'm going to actually discard those two there. And use defend. Probably not the Essence of Steel. That's probably going to be safe for the final fight. But I think the only thing I'm going to be using for damage is Snipe. Oof. Enemy's not attacking next turn. We know that for a fact. Ouch. All of our defends were in the next hand. Because of course they were. Right, that's a log of bull and down with a tiny chest gain 30 gold. You're 10% more likely to find treasure in question mark rooms. Revamp the world and first strike. I mean, the world is good, right? It, it's, again, just a insta pick. It doesn't have a negative effect. On this or any other archetype for that matter. Okay. So I can defend. I can strike, snipe. You're probably not attacking next turn. And then I'll house cleaning the shifting gears to give myself some extra defense. Oh, the front line did decide not to attack this turn. Damn. That's not good for me. <laughs> Hmm. 
Definitely got a weak in the backliner, otherwise I'm dead. Yikes. Uh, we got trouble, boss. These enemies are not strictly deterministic, is the problem. You have attacked two turns in a row, so I know you're not attacking next turn. And the backline is not attacking either. Beautiful. Whew. We might actually have to rest before the boss, despite the fact that I desperately don't want to do that. Parthinian shot. Eh. Unfortunately, the boss is also non-deterministic here, so... Whew. Definitely attacking next turn. I know that much. You're definitely attacking next turn. I'll discard shifting gears here happily. Get myself an extra dex. Okay. Since I've come into this fight with relatively low HP, the enemy's not doing that much, but also the garlic is making them super languid. They haven't got that much strength on this turn. It's very handy. With kidney shot, they're probably weakened to the point they actually can't even damage us. Yep. So we'll snipe you. You usually attack on the second turn, but you might not, so... Let's not take that for gospel. There we go. Thankfully, did decide to attack. I don't need to use a defense this turn. But I do get an extra dex from that. That extra dex is going to come in handy later, so it's pretty important to get it while I can. House cleaning is going to be really nice to allow me to discard these burns. Probably not attacking next turn. Although, again, I can't guarantee that. Damn it. Decided to attack, naturally. Can't be attacking again next turn. Right? I can strike there because we've actually got the full defense from our Platon armor. Yes, there we go. That's a defending turn. Beautiful. Snipe, you're definitely attacking next turn after that defense. Our plated armor should trigger. Oh, should trigger after the burn, actually. So I'll have to defend here. Yeah, it does trigger after the burn. Thank you for attacking this turn. Makes my life easy. I mean, if I discard shifting gears here, we're fully defended and we are in such a good position for being fully defended later on as well. Enemy is definitely attacking next turn because it's their multi-attack turn, so they're definitely doing it. They're already weakened, so we're safe on that front. It's not like we necessarily have to weaken them, but I will. <clears throat> so, 3 by 6 is 18. Do I have the ability to defend for 18? Yes, with both of my defense in hand, that's 16 defense plus 4 from the knives. So, shifting gears, the world, then I've got a gambler's brew, those, play both defense, I'll snipe assuming an attack next turn and then discard the burn. And now we'll be fully defended. Hopefully they attack. Yep, they're deciding to attack this turn. And we're short on lethal. <laughs> you son of a... Oh, really? That's so maddening.
So many burns in the deck. Good lord. I wanted to perfect that fight, damn it. All right, fan of knives, spend all energy, throw X multiplied by two, so X two knives, each deals six to a random enemy. I do want a knives build, but... And that's some AoE as well. The problem with that is primarily that what's it really doing for me? I guess. I would need a lot of knives. Like if I cast it for three, I'm throwing six knives. I eventually do have that many. Six by six, 36. So three, I'm casting it. I've got another casting cost in. I have to have the knives and I'm dealing 36. <clears throat> Damn it. Good Lord. Upgrades to eight. It's just not enough. Take the world there. I hate taking Sozu, but I should probably take Sozu here. Obviously, I can't take Velvet Choker. I would be completely screwed by it. And Blackstar, while I do want to hunt additional elites, the extra energy is really important because we have so much draw in the deck. Okay, there's a really good path here. Unfortunately, the first shop is after the first elite, which is not what I wanted. Uh, this enemy is almost always on turn two going to use a debuff, even if it's not Hex. So, we'll choose that you're not attacking. I kind of want to shift in gears rather than gain the decks here. Definitely use the world. I'm double guessing you're not attacking. I'm doubling down on that one. I am so certain. Here's where we see me lose. Nope. Boom. Oh, no. Okay, hang on. This is actually something I was aware of. Vision. Predict the next enemy intent for the next turn. If it is correct, trigger the effect. Same effects do not stack, so I couldn't snipe multiple times. I knew that as well, and I still tried to do it. Ugh. It is possible the enemy debuffs a game next turn anyway, so I'm going to guess they're not attacking. I'm going to gain some decks here because I feel like we're going to need it. Yep. Decided not to attack this turn. And never mind. I've got lethal. Beautiful. Far seeing misdirection and rearm. Well. Rearm is a way to gain some more knives. Definitely. And it also triggers the letter opener quite handily. The problem is, what am I doing with these knives? I have no benefit yet set up. The world chains into the world. You have nothing but attacks, so... I'm gonna guess that you're attacking next turn. Oh, call it a hunch. Discard those two in order to gain one dex, which means a single defend will defend me. And a single defend will defend me again. Hell yeah. The world chains into the world. Hang on. Uh, yeah, we have uh, infinite. I didn't even think about it, but since we have a way to deal damage whenever we play a skill, we can just the world into the world forever. I think this character has a lot of infinite potential. I mean, this is the second infinite I found, and I played them for three episodes. <laughs> it is worth noting that the playstyle that I run with, which is running a thin deck that has like really, really consistent draws, is very, very likely, or is the most likely kind of deck to be able to run into infinite situations. I mean, it's going to be almost impossible to convince me to add a card to this deck at this point. Nope, not even Jaxed. This is now a The World deck. I didn't know that that was a thing, 
but it's a thing now. This is, by the way, also a deck that you can run in the silent. But the thing is, the silent starts with 12 cards, so infinite decks with the silent are a little more annoying to get because you have more cards to thin through. But if you have letter opener or if you have thousand cards, right? So just anything that translates card played or skills played in particular into damage. Thousand cards translates any card, but skills included. Then you can do this with the... What's the name of the card again? Escape Plan. We... Well, this is certainly a play style. <laughs> oh, man. I'm just going to chill with the knives now. Advance would work for this build as well. As soon as I got letter opener, I should have recognized that it's going to be basically impossible to stop me at this point. Uh, we don't want our hand to overflow, though, so we're not going to take advance. It's also not necessary. Art of War, if you don't play any attacks during your turn, gain an extra energy next turn. Somehow I feel like I'm not going to need it. Call me old-fashioned, but I like to win in the old-fashioned way. So, okay, never mind. I called myself old-fashioned. You know, the old-fashioned way where you play the world every single turn. This is one of the big reasons that cards that draw multiple copies either usually don't have zero cost. These are zero cost on their upgrade, but they also make each other cost zero. Or they have a limiting factor, like you cannot draw any other cards this turn. Like Battle Trance, for example, allows you to draw three, four on upgrade, four zero, but it has a limitation. You can no longer draw any cards after. Escape Plan only replaces itself. The Finesse and Flash of Steel only replace themselves. Pommel Strike costs one. These exact kind of situations are really, really easy to accidentally end up in. I, I don't know if I should just do this. Like, I didn't perfect the first floor boss, which I'm actually really sad about because otherwise I would be able to have a really good score just by doing this. I would like to find more ways to enable this to deal damage though. Thing is, as long as my opening hand has either the world shifting gears or the other copy of the world, we're done. We win. It just takes a real long time. Here's where Skrullpoint's ultra super fast mode would be useful. I have installed and played around with that mod a little bit, but I decided not to continue using it, especially in the series in particular. Just because it does make everything look really, really rushed graphically. And while that would be really, really good for a stream, for, you know, video content, especially pre-recorded video content, that's a bit... It just looks a bit rough when it's playing super fast. So this is as fast as I'm going to be going for the moment. There we go. We got him. The Book of Stabbing down in turn one. Warbane upon pick up upgrade two random skills. Good lord. Yeah, the world got upgraded. Of course it did. I kind of want to go elite hunting now. I can go for two more elites. Oof. Okay. I mean, I wanted to go to the two shops. You know what? It's going to be more interesting to go to the two shops and try and find other things to do here. 
If I can find other ways to benefit from my cards played, I'll be really happy about that. Unparalleled. If there's no other card in your deck that costs two, gain two strength or decks. I really like the idea of that. I just don't know if I'll ever benefit from it. Because I don't attack. <laughs> uh, Arrowhead, you may upgrade two cards whenever you smith. We don't really smith. I'm going to remove another card from the deck. And I'll take Fruit Juice for maximum HP. Oh, no, of course I can't do it because it's so soon. Master of Strategy. The game is just offering me different ways to get this running. Like Morning Call, which is innate. Draw two cards, exhaust Ethereal. That would be a great way to get this whole build running as well. In fact, I'll take it. Ice Cream Energy is now conserved between turns. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there we go. Three and then four and then just eight. 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 <laughs> oh no. You know, the frustrating part about this for me as a content creator as wanky of a title as that sounds like. It's the easiest way to describe. I make videos on YouTube? Um, the worst part for me is, what, what do I say now? I usually talk about the strategy of the game at hand, right? I usually talk about the moment-to-moment the -moment plays, but that kind of running live commentary here wouldn't really make sense. All right, we're going to play the world, and then the world, and then the world, and then that's going to activate Letter Opener for five damage in AoE, and then we're going to play the world, the world, and then the world, which is going to activate the Letter Opener for five damage in AoE, and then we're going to play the world, the world, the world for five damage in AoE. Hell yes, and that wins the fight. Okay, so what are we going to do in the next fight? Well, I have a consideration. I might play the world. Smith Morning Call. I'm effectively just making this foolproof at this point by having that Morning Call. It's absolutely foolproof. There is nothing now that can stop me from doing this. Now, the world does draw two cards, and I am only using it to draw one card, so I have the possibility of, in between every world, playing another card. But since Snipe doesn't stack with itself, like, the best I can do is Strike. And then the world. And then... Strike. World. Strike. World. I guess that's gonna speed it up. Okay, 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 okay. Never mind, never mind. This is good, this is good. I'm gonna be using the hotkeys for this because, come on. Like, the reason that people didn't initially want me to use the hotkeys was because it would become difficult to tell what I was playing. But... I'm only going to be playing Strike and the World, and also Speed is of the Essence here. <laughs> Otherwise, this is going forever. <laughs> Whee! Okay, at least we can speed it up now. None of those are necessary. Uh, we should probably upgrade that Strike if we're going to be using it like this. Gremlin food, whenever you rest, upgrade a... Oh, it's panache! <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> uh, cut another defend, and yeah, panache is now going to be a great way for this to deal damage as well. <laughs> oh, this is insane. All right. Cool. And we'll shift in gears, and we are now in the zone, yes? Strike world. I'm just gonna get these set up, and now it's strike world! That's what I'm calling the theme park with the installations of this particular thing going on. It's strike world. Oh, nothing can stop us now. It is worth noting, there are other infinites that are, you know, not extraordinarily difficult to get in the game when you align two rare cards of the same type when upgraded. So it is worth noting that there's precedent for this. In particular, what I'm thinking about is if you get two upgraded exhumes in your deck as the Ironclad, they both upgrade to be zero cost and they take a card that has been exhausted this combat 
back into your hand. If you have the letter opener, that's an infinite. They're both zero costs. They both get each other back. It's exactly the same as this, frankly. You can also have Sharon's Ashes to enable that build as well. Which is three damage to all enemies every time you exhaust a card. But the reason that's not something that you see super commonly is because Exhume is not a card that you pick... I mean, there's no reason to take any of this. Exhume is not a card that you pick up commonly. So, Exhume is a card you take when you have guaranteed way to gain value out of it. Like, you have, like, an exhaust heavy deck, or you have, like, a bunch of offerings, or something like that. Um, if you always took Exhume, then it would be much more common. But the thing is, the world is kind of an always take card. Because it's, it's energy neutral, at the very least... And it's card uh, advantage. We'll be taking Tiny House here. It has been buffed from giving you 30 gold to giving you 50 gold. We don't need the Sweet Flower. The Sweet Flower is from Replay the Spire. Gain energy at the start of each turn. Less map information. The problem is I actually have colored map mod on. So I believe that I'll s if I took Sweet Flower, I would still be able to see every different map space. Because I'd just be able to tell by the color. Uh, Philosopher's Stone gain energy at the start of each turn. All enemies start with two strength. We don't need any of those. So we're going to gain a random potion, which we won't because of Sosu. We get 50 gold, raise our max HP by five, obtain a card, and a upgrade a random card. I'll be taking none of these, obviously. Skip that card. Woo! All right, if we get the option to teleport directly to the boss, I might take it. <laughs> Which is extraordinarily rare for me. Not my kind of thing. Okay. Here I'm not actually going to be intervening with the strikes. I'm just going to let Panache and the letter opener do their job. Just because if I was striking, I would be striking the target that is most likely to live for the longest, who has thorns on them. Which is a bad idea. Nope. I mean, I really shouldn't even be checking the cards at this point. There is nothing it could offer that I would take. Sure, I could take Master of Strategy, but it's not necessary. At all. I'm gonna keep my deck super thin. There's the panache. <laughs> and it's time to get brazen and brash. Oh, God. You're my whole world, too. <laughs> Nothing can stop us. It's so silly. All right, Cursed Concoction, gain three strength and two decks, add a random curse to your uh, draw and discard pile. We can't even take that. It doesn't do anything for us. Shifting gears would be nice, but it's not necessary at all. There's no reason to take it. I love that I put Morning Call in the stack, actually. I didn't think it was essential, but it definitely guarantees that we will always get this combo active on turn one, which is nice. It's handy. So we're using six and seven here. Basically, I just have to make sure that I play the strike first. So I'm either hitting seven, six, or six, six, because the world puts itself back in the place of six. All right. And some gold, a bunch of stuff I don't want. Each time you trigger a vision effect, trigger it one more time, and it upgrades to be innate. That's really interesting. That is really interesting. <laughs> Bandana, gain two thievery for the first three turns of combat. All right, well, I can farm money? Not that much, but I can farm money with that. Let's take it. 
All right. Do I need to rest uh, zones? Like, I, I have nothing I can do at a rest site anyway. All of them are upgraded, and I'm on full HP. Dangerous to go alone. Give me all of your gold. Uh, all right. Nash, shifting gears, morning call. So I'll play to the worlds, then a strike, then another world. Beautiful. And now the strike, every single time I play it, is just going to be some stealing for me. Let's farm that money. Unfortunately, the strike is also eventually going to deal like 400 damage by itself. It's 26 right now. We've definitely got the combo modifier as well. We're playing 25. I mean, we literally just played 25 there. This isn't going to pay for itself. The thievery I get over the course of this run is not going to pay for <laughs> the cost of bandana. Matroshka, the next two chests you open contain two relics, excluding boss chests. Well, at the very least, we got that before a boss chest. Well, sorry, before a chest, rather. Right, and then it's strike time. <laughs> oh, this is so insane. I am really glad that I just decided to stick with the world's build. These, these kinds of combos and the fact that I can so consistently get them, this is why I really love running thin deck strategies degenerate stuff you'll remember you'll remember yeah this is really presumptuous of me to say uh it's possible that you remember the title of my first episode ever of slay the spire was degenerate and that's because i immediately knew what kind of deck i would be attracted to just super degenerate decks Funnel at the end of your end at the end of your turn. What end of my turn? Uh, also, hand mirror whenever you play it, whenever you gain vulnerable or weakened, it is also applied to the enemy that sent it. Sleeping makes me feel good. Oh, bag of marbles. That's actually probably handy for us. At the start of each combat, apply one vulnerability to all enemies. Yeah, thank you. Uh, that's also Chemical X, by the way. Whenever he, whenever you play a cost with a cost X card, its effects are increased by two. Now, interestingly, that used to exist in the base game, and then it was cut early in development. I think it was a potion? I think it only did effects increased by one. But then Replay the Spire found the files for it, activated it in the game... And then later on, probably two weeks ago, the main branch of the game decided to re-include Chemical X as a shop item. And with its effects in are increased to two. So it looks like it came from Replay the Spire, but from Replay the Spire, it came from the base game. So it's kind of just ping-ponging back and forth. <laughs> and the other one is the start of each combat heal for two HP. I'm trying to be better about always laying those out. Sure, seven gold so that I can get the red mask. Hell yeah. <laughs> Another shop and now I don't get it. Ah, oh, sure, I can we even missed out on. Damn it. Oh, well. Uh, there's also guidebook uh, on pick up, upgrade two cards randomly, prioritizes rarer cards. Shuriken is every time you play three attacks in single turn, gain his strength, and the dream catcher whenever you rescue made a card to your deck. Hello. <laughs> I was hoping to see you. It's the one named after me. All right, morning call first, then Panache, then the world. I think, so both of the times on camera that I've encountered the Rhapsodic Horda, I think I'm killing them before they even get to do their vocal lines, which is just so sad. All right, we're on six and seven here, cool. So to clarify, the spawning conditions for this character from the patch notes appear to be if your relic to deck ratio, sorry, if your card to relic ratio is 
Oh, crumbs. If you have twice as many relics as you have cards, I think. I'm not certain about that one. Damn it. I thought I'd, I thought I'd learned it. I literally just read the patch notes again before launching into this recording. But no, I immediately forgot it. Damn. It's also more likely to spawn the larger amount of relics that you have as well. Whee! Get him! <laughs> that might be the perfect relic for that to have given me. It's the singing bowl. Kill the awakened one instantaneously here if we can. Definitely pe uh, play the panache and there's the strike. Beautiful. So now we can just strike, world strike. The panache will kill the frontliners in time. I think with the two worlds and the shifting gears, right, my in play deck is how large? My in play deck is seven cards. Yeah, I, I still will be able to. Whoops. Misplay. But I still will be able to combo off after the Awakened One changes forms. Whee! And again, one more time, we're going to celebrate. Get him! Then I'll end the turn there. And. Yeah, as long as we literally didn't draw everything except for our uh, draw cards, we were going to be fine here. Oh, the world, then the world. I'm just trying to set up the combo correctly. Five, and then six. And now we are just on the sixes and sevens. Beautiful. <laughs> I actually wouldn't put it past the evil pickle for the Rhapsodic Hoarder to have a ridiculously high chance of giving you the Singing Bowl in particular as the Relic. But I know that the Rhapsodic Hoarder has a move where it gains Relics itself. But I've only ever seen it do it once and then it died extremely quickly thereafter. And I also know it has vocal lines, but I've only ever seen those once, and then it died very quickly thereafter. I'm killing him too quickly. Damn. Deal 984. Yeah, I'm really... I'm disappointed by that. Because we would have an extra 100 if we just perfected the first floor boss. And it was just a garbage draw getting three burns when there was only like one left in our deck at that time that made it so that we definitely took that. We also could have killed the enemy that turn if we just got damage at all, frankly. Oh, well. I think I'll settle for the fact that we had, like, a permanent infinite over the course of that entire run. For the moment, though, my name's been Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Slay the Spire modded. There is a link in the description down below to each and every single one of the mods that is currently installed in the series, as well as a video of me explaining how to install them. Please watch the video if you don't know how to install them because it explains it. You don't have to like open the mod files like the .jar. That's not how that works. It's all explained in the video. Don't worry. I'll walk you through it. If you have any problems with the video, then you can ask me. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves and hopefully we'll see you next time.